San Francisco startup Memphis Meats made headlines last week when they released a viral video of a chef cooking and eating a test tube meatball. It sounds extreme, but for a lot of couples, that's the only way they can conceive processed meats. In vitro meat, synthetic meat, or schmeat, if you don't care how dumb you sound, are animal products grown in labs. The process uses stem cells taken from the muscle fibers of host animals and replicates them into new cells making hamburger-like pastes. You hear that, taste buds? Replicated muscle fiber pastes. Memphis Meats CEO Uma Valetti swears it is the future of meat and pledges to bring it to market in the next five years. Personally, I never listen to some creep telling me he's got the future of meat. It sounds less than appetizing, but before you get all brave new world and go off the grid, man, consider what it could mean for the food industry. By 2050, the world population will have grown to over 10 billion people. The population of sub-Saharan Africa will more than double, and they're already experiencing food shortages. Synthetic meat could bring far more food into needy areas while cutting down on both greenhouse gas emissions and the need for antibiotics, land, or pesticides. Plus, by manipulating the cells, scientists can make synthetic meats healthier for us than their natural counterparts. Memphis Meats' Valetti hopes to grow meat that is packed with protein while cutting down on the fats that are harmful to us and definitely not at all part of what we love about bacon. But not everyone is excited for this new food revolution. There is increasing resistance to genetically modified food in America. Multiple anti-GMO groups lobby heavily against companies like Monsanto, which are trying to bring more genetically modified produce into our markets. Even Chipotle announced that they would not feature any GMO products on their menu mainly to make sure they leave room for products that are tainted with E. coli. Anti-GMOers are worried that there simply hasn't been enough time to fully consider the long-term effects of GMO products. Besides health ramifications for humans, GMOs introduce new variables that leave agriculture vulnerable to unknowns, which could wipe out most of the world's food supply. So if GMOs are going to actually change the world, they've got to first address their PR problem and get the general public better educated on the pros and cons. But even under this increased scrutiny, Valetti still calls his lab-grown food the meatball that changed the world. And he's not too worried about the public accepting his Franken-meat as long as it tastes just as good as the real deal. And if it doesn't, I guess I'll get used to eating paste. Hey, thanks for watching The Daily Desk. If you like what you saw, click to subscribe, comment below, share the link with a friend or an enemy. I don't care.